example, um, in lists.asmx, there's a uh, method called get list items. So my operation would be get list items. Uh, if I'm in a site called demos, my web URL would be for slash demos. I would specify the options for mm -hmm. that operation. Every operation has different options. Like with the get list items, you have to specify the list name. Uh, and with, with the get user info uh, method, you have to supply the, supply the login name. Uh, whether or not it's async and uh, the completion function. Basically, the completion function gets called when this when this request is done, and it passes the information back to you that you that you requested. This is the this is the general syntax of it. Now, I'll give you a, an actual example. Is that a little bit better, or is it still not readable? Can people actually read that? So here's an example of get list items. So I'm specifying that the operation is get list items. I'm specifying that this operation is going to be not async. And I'm calling into the list announcements. Mm -hmm. uh, here's where camel comes into play. You have to specify your view fields. Uh, the only field I want to view is the title. And when it's all said and done, when this operation completes, it's going to call this function right here. And this function, basically all it's doing is adding a list item to, to a div. It's not doing anything too complicated. So I'm calling out to get list items. I'm saying I only want to see the title field. When you come back, append to this div all the list elements <coughs> inside inside that uh, inside that response. Does everybody everybody go sort of get what this is what this is doing? Anybody completely confused? Nope. Right on. And also, if you have an error, are you going to get it again back in the response XML? And you can search. <coughs> The wording error, for example, and you can display it nicely. Um, there's a lot of examples to add what he just said. There's a lot of examples online on how to deal with errors when you get a response. Um, you can check the, uh, the, uh, the response XML for an error. Right off the bat, that's the first thing you should do. This is obviously not best code, and this is just an example of how to use it. You, you check the response XML for an error. If it has an error in it, you, you show the error to the user and say it didn't work. But basically, you take the response XML. You find the node for the row, and for each of those rows, you're adding a list item to the to the div. It's quite simple. It's that easy. It's like Tolkien for the it's, it's really easy. <laughs> it's really easy. Like, think about all the steps we skipped right here uh, to make this work. What would you have to do in order to get list items from a list using the API? Like, what would be the procedure? Say you had a control that was going to list items and list all the items in a list the title of all the items in a list in a control for a user. What was the, what would you have to do? You'd have to add, you'd have to create a user control. You'd have to reference the, the SharePoint assembly. You'd have to deploy you'd have to deploy your user control assembly to the GAC. You'd have to deploy your your user control file to to the server. You you've basically bypassed all that and with about I don't know what is that maybe ten lines of JavaScript code you've done everything that you need to do. It's, that's how light, lightweight it is. No deployment of the assemblies, nothing. You, you, you pretty much you're up and running within seconds, I'd say. And here's another example for get user info. Same thing. I'm specifying my operation, which is get user info. Uh, the user login name, which is a very original demo user, uh, and my completion function. What I want to do with the data once I have it. It's Think, again, think about what it would take to do what, the, what it would do to display user info in a control. You'd have to create the user control. You'd have to mark it as a safe control. You'd have to deploy your assembly to the GAC. You'd have to deploy your user control to, to the file system. Like you, You've avoided all this, and you're just doing it purely in JavaScript because of SB services. So you would just, sorry, you would just drop this code inside a content editor web part? For testing? For testing, I would. Yes. Inside the script tags. Inside the script tags, I would I would put it in a content editor web part for testing. I would do that. Yeah. And then okay, so in the production, you put it in your script library. Put it in your script library and use it. You can use it any way you want, or you can use it on your pages, or have it already on the page and deploy it with the page, or you can you can use the page the additional page head control to to put it on the page to detect whether or not you're in a certain library. Um, but think about how quickly you just prototyped an entire an entire control. You've just written some JavaScript, and you're you're off to the races. You you don't have any of that other overhead. With SB services, can you specify the data types? So can you get back JSON instead of XML, or is it only XML? 
I don't know. That's well, actually a good question. Well, you, you can you can use normal not SP services, but you can use normal AJAX. And in the AJAX envelope, you can say, oh, okay, I'm gonna pass this JSON, and it will return back. Yes. Okay. Is that true for 2007 as well? Yes, I've done it in 2007. And it works into 2010 too. So. But he's talking about doing the uh, calling the uh, the web service directly. You're not yes. talking about just calling. Has anybody seen what it's like to call a web service directly? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. So dealing with a little XML as a, as opposed to JSON, uh, rather than having to write a huge SOAP envelope for for a web service call, I'm going to take the nice abstracted simple <coughs> library over the huge envelope and maintaining all, maintaining those calls. What do you mean by putting in a script library for production? Um, some people, not everybody, some some clients like to keep a central repository for all their scripts in a document library for versioning purposes. Uh, over at Quizcom, we use the layouts folder and keep keep the uh, keep the scripts in a version folder. Uh, so this would be in one of the. Um, use internal field names, <laughs> return values, have OWS appended to the front. If you've ever used a SharePoint web service, you know this, because when it comes back, you get this ugly XML document with OS in front of everything. Uh, <laughs> look up and people fields are returned this way. You feel like if you Again, if you've, you've used the web services, that's how they're returned. Um, when you create a new item, check for a new item ID. When you update an item, check for the item ID. If the item ID is null, something's gone wrong. That's your first indication that you should check for you should check for errors. Everybody got that? This is just quick checking. I'm trying to speed up because I want you guys to ask questions uh, after this. Um, development tips: limit rows, return using camel. That's obvious, uh, especially in SharePoint. You don't want to make a call to a list and get 2,000 items and get bogged down. You want to limit it, you want to, you want to use pagination as much as possible. Um, don't call the web services until you actually need it. Uh, that's why you have async, that's why you have async calls. You call it when you need it, it'll let you know when it's done, it'll give, it, it'll give you the information. Um, uh, attributes are awesome. Actually, we use a lot of custom attributes at QuizCom. We'll actually put custom attributes into all our elements just so that we know we can access them. And jQuery is fantastic at getting a hold of all these custom attributes on any element that, that we have. Does everybody know what I mean by attributes are awesome? Like, like we have sometimes on our on our input item, we'll have an attribute called uh, wiki plus data. Wiki plus is one of our products. I, and literally I can call, I can get a hold of that attribute by saying wiki plus data, jQuery will take care of everything for me. It, you can even use it as a selector if you're familiar with, uh, if you're familiar with, um, what's that called? Oh, I'm drawing a blank right now. Sorry, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, my recommendation to you uh, when you're developing with jQuery is use whatever tool you are comfortable with. Some people love Visual Studio, some people hate Visual Studio. Some people hate SharePoint Designer, some people just don't like SharePoint Designer. Uh, <laughs> uh, one thing that I recommend is Aptana. Uh, it's a full JavaScript IDE. It's got great IntelliSense, but don't kid yourself, so does Visual Studio, because uh, jQuery has released something called VS Doc. It's, uh, it, it actually does the autocomplete IntelliSense inside Visual Studio for you for jQuery. So as you're typing uh, jQuery commands, it will fill, it will give you a, a list of things of autocomplete information. It's actually quite nice. Has everybody heard of VS Doc for jQuery? No? Write that down. That's important. That's important stuff right there. Uh, some people like to use Notepad, but I haven't used Notepad since I built my first HTML page. And uh, <laughs> oh god, I'm old. Um, and, and bracket matching is impossible, especially considering how encapsulated and uh, the hierarchy of a SharePoint of a jQuery request can be. It'd be it'd be difficult. Some people like the like a challenge. So if you like a challenge, Notepad. If you like IntelliSense, Visual Studio, or something like App, Patna. So you're saying even Notepad plus plus? Is no, yeah. Notepad plus plus does bracket matching. It does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Notepad that, plus plus. That's how long. That's I've, how long I haven't used Notepad for. It. I've de I've developed a Notepad before. Yeah, I, I, my first web page really was made in Notepad. It was a Toronto Maple Leafs web page, and I made it in Notepad. I thought it was awesome. <laughs>
it was, it was a lot of fun. It only had like three pages. It's a great way to learn a language. Fifty hours. What was that? It's a great way to learn a language. It's a great way to learn a language. It's not a great way to maintain and develop no. a language. So I would recommend. <laughs> I would recommend Visual Studio or something like that. No, I, I like Visual Studio. I don't have a problem with it. Some people think it's a little clunky. Some people think it's a little slow. It requires a lot of resources, but. When it comes to developing for SharePoint, you're eventually going to use it. You're eventually going to use it. So why fight it? Oh, so can I ask then, so what's a good practice? So you, if, you're, if you're testing your jQuery locally yep. on your dev machine, yep. but you're trying to work with a pre-rendered page that doesn't exist until it's rendered on your browser. So what do you do? Take a snapshot of the HTML? Like, What's the best way to work with the objects? On the page that's already that you're yeah, testing? As, you, as you're building your... Some people like to crack open a content editor web part on the page and just start going from there. Uh, you, but like, then you don't take advantage of like uh, debugging you features can. of Google Studio. Well, sure you can. You can, you can use the IE toolbar. To you, can, you, can, you, can, you can use the IE developer toolbar as well. You can use Firebug. Uh, you, you, you can use Firebug. Like, once you put that JavaScript on the page in the content editor web yeah. part, you can attach Visual Studio to the I, to Internet Explorer process and get, get full access to the DOM and, and debug it that way. Uh, but you have to actually, there's an option you have to turn off uh, in, in Internet Explorer, uh, which says do not allow external debuggers, I think it's called, right? Is that the do not allow external script like debuggers? You've got to turn that off. Or you can just use a developer toolbar and you're good to go, or Firebug, or Whatever other thing, like I said, use what you're comfortable with. The most popular things are Firebug, the Internet, uh, IE Developer Toolbar, and Visual Studio to debug the, uh, the client side stuff. Uh, more on debugging. If you've done JavaScript, you know about alerts. Put an alert everywhere. Sometimes I throw in random variables that don't exist just so I get a random breakpoint so I can start from there. Um, yeah, here we go. Firefox. We, we're a little bit. You're a little bit ahead of uh, ahead of us. Firefox and the IE. This, this is what I use most often. I actually use the IE, IE Developer Toolbar. It's actually gotten really good. Like I know some people say that Fire Firebug is the best, but I personally prefer the IE Developer Toolbar. Uh, who has a preference? Firebug versus Firebug? All right. IE Developer Toolbar. Oh wow, it's like uh, the people who actually answered. It's a 50/50 there. Like I said, use whatever you're comfortable with. My personal preference is this, um, but if you obviously Firebug is, is very good as well. Uh, you know, we're all familiar with the common errors. Uh, usually, if you get an object uh, object expected error or object doesn't support method, your your library probably didn't load. Uh, make sure you don't load scripts more than once. This is actually crucial when it comes to jQuery. Um, is everybody familiar with the jQuery command on uh, resolve no co um, no conflicts? Because jQuery uses the dollar the, the, the dollar sign for for its uh, for its uh, token, uh, that actually may collide with other things. Uh, one one time that I actually found this to happen in SharePoint was in a picture library. Uh, it also uses the dollar sign token, and then you have collisions that way. So try to only load it once. Uh, Maybe make an additional page head control which checks to make that other uh, other jQuery libraries already haven't been loaded and things like that. Check your braces, make sure you're in lines with semicolons, and check for missing quotes. These are all common sense things. I'm not gonna if you've developed a, if you've developed in JavaScript, you're you're good to go from this perspective. Uh, this, at this point, does anybody have any questions? Any at all? You mentioned that Microsoft maintains a repository. That's yes, it's called CDN, right? So, to that fact, the question, what's Microsoft's take on SP services and jQuery, what's their, their position? Well, I'll put it to you this way. Uh, when you get Visual Studio 2010 you make a web application, uh, it already puts, it puts jQuery in a script folder for you right off the bat. Uh, jQuery, is now, there's now a VS doc supported by Microsoft, and they're, and they're storing it on a, on a repository for you. So my take on it is Microsoft's all for jQuery. Uh, that's a lot of support to throw jQuery's way. Uh, without officially ever coming out and saying we, you know, jQuery is awesome. But think about it. Open Visual Studio, fire up an internet, uh, a web application project. You'll have a jQuery VS doc and a jQuery doc right there, right off the bat. Uh, 